Now, the way they did it in the lecture notes here is they did sodium hydroxide H2O and heat. So this would be a base catalyzed hydrolysis. We know that hydroly hydrolysis turns carboxylic acid derivatives into carboxylic acids. Now there's one problem, one problem, one thing about this that isn't right. What was the one aspect of this product that's not consistent with the reagents that I'm using? The conditions? The, uh, How should I fix this? Um, Deprotonated? Yeah. We've, known, we've seen that carboxylic acids have two different forms, protonated and not protonated. Well, under basic conditions, we should get the deprotonated form. So that's our base catalyzed hydrolysis. And we've also seen that um, it's true that water and base could also uh, react with the ketone. Mm -hmm. However, that's an equilibrium reaction that actually favors the ketone, not the product. So we're not going to worry about any attack on the ketone here. We're just going to worry about the attack on the carboxylic acid derivative. Now, in order to decarboxylate, we actually need a carboxylic acid here. So how can we make this into a carboxylic acid? Um, you can add an acid. That's right. And then how can we get this to decarboxylate? Are you ready? How do we know this is a good candidate now for decarboxylation? Do you remember what, what does it take for something to be able to decarboxylate? Because you have a carbonyl carbon that's beta. Right. We have a beta carbonyl carboxylic acid. Very good. By the way, I've noticed in working with some other students, a lot of students start getting into the habit of thinking that any carboxylic acid can decarboxylate. They're always saying, gee, I can't add heat because that would make it decarboxylate. Well, you don't need to worry about that except for beta carbonyl carboxylic acids. If there wasn't a beta carbonyl here, this couldn't decarboxylate. And we don't have to do much to get this to decarboxylate, we just have to add heat. So let's draw what this would look like after the decarboxylation. We won't go through the mechanism for that, but what would it look like after it decarboxylates? Okay. Why don't you number both of those? Oh, no, actually, I think you did well. That's fine. That's good. That's, oh, the that's right. You were right and I was wrong. How many carbons do you lose when you decarboxylate? You lose the bond from the alpha carbon to the beta carbon, the carbon, right? Everything to the right. Do they pop that, uh, if it's Let, let's make this more precise. How many carbons is the molecule going to lose when it decarboxylates? One, two, three, four. How many carbons are going to break off when we decarboxylate? Um, well, would it depend on how long the chain? Uh, well, just two. Uh, let's see. Maybe that question didn't quite make sense. One. We're just going to lose this one carbon. Of course, you, we don't know how many carbons there are over here, but we're always going to lose one carbon from the carboxyl group. That was the main point I wanted to make. So we're not going to lose this carbon. Yes. So you, you drew this correctly. So the, most, the easiest way to write the product would look like this. We just take the starting material and we just cleave this one bond. But the, the way you wrote it is uh, maybe a little bit more uh, standard. You just bet this group up to here, so that's fine. But this carbon is not this carbon. That's this carbon has been, uh, has been lost. If we want to put in words what we're doing, we are cleaving the bond between the carboxy carbon and the alpha carbon cleaving the bond between the carboxy and the alpha carbon. But I think if you just remind yourself that you're simply going to lose one carbon, the carboxy carbon, then we'll get the right product here. And now we've done what we said we were going to do, which is we just got a pure ketone. So this is something you're likely have to do on the test. Use the Clayson condensation just to get a ketone. It seems like the Clayson condensation gives you something much more complicated than a ketone. However, because this is a beta carbonyl, it has the potential to decarboxylate if we first turn it into a carboxylic acid. Now this is the, 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 the uh, reactions that your instructor used in their notes, even though it seems like there's a much simpler way to do this. So first they did a base catalyzed hydrolysis to make this into a carboxylate, then they protonated it to make it into a carboxylic acid, and then they added heat. Um, it seems to me that you could get the same exact product if you just added H3O plus and heat to this. Why bother doing a base catalyzed hydrolysis? Why not do an acid catalyzed hydrolysis? Because the acid catalyzed hydrolysis 
would just take you right to here, and then the heat would decarboxylate it. So I'm not sure why your instructor seems to prefer doing it the base catalyzed way, but that, that does seem to be the way that your instructor keeps writing it. Um, so, but if your instructor does the base catalyzed approach, then they have to add acid to get the protonated reform before they decarboxylate. If you just added H3O plus and heat to this, do you see how that would take us straight to this picture? Because it would, it would hydrolyze this bond and it would give us the protonated form, and the heat would then take us to here. Okay, so that would be an alternative way that to me seems simpler, even though that's not what your instructor did. So how could we, so how could we put all this together to make a ketone? So the point of what we're doing here is So basically what we've done here is we've added this group to the alpha carbon and then we cleaved this off. Mm -hmm. We added this group to the alpha carbon and then we cleaved this uh, off. And when the alpha carbon attacks this, it turns into a ketone. <coughs> it's pretty complicated. It's hard for me to hold this whole thing in my head. All right. This reaction here, by the way, is called saponification. This base catalyzed hydrolysis. Base catalyzed hydrolysis is saponification. Ah, yeah, so now, if, uh, on multiple choice, if he had that, he would have to start out with the, uh, the uh, carboxylate, right? If he had, uh, if he said, you know, determine the, pro if he wanted to, like, you know, to choose from uh, A through D on determine the product, and it would be just that, uh, the left part of that uh, first uh, equation there with the uh, sodium hydroxide, the water, and the heat, correct? He would show that, uh, and then uh, he would have a, a list of, I don't know if I followed I, I, the question. A professor's not going to try to trick you and, and put the uh, sodium hydroxide with uh, a regular uh, carboxylic acid, would they? They might. Oh. Uh, but then hopefully there would be another choice where it's yes. deprotonated. Okay. So if you have to choose between a protonated and a deprotonated carboxylic acid, you choose based on the conditions, okay. acidic All right. or basic. So I should have kept putting in the stars here. Maybe this will help to, to think about this. So here's the carbons that came from the enolate over here. And here's the carbons that came from our uh, electrophile. And here's the bond that was formed between the alpha carbon and the star. And this group here eventually got lost. Okay. And this group got turned just into a ketone. So there's, there's a lot of changes that are happening here. This is the portion that was electrophilic, and this was the nucleophilic portion. So here we have a synthesis problem. We have to figure out how to do this synthesis. I think this is a pretty hard problem. I'll give you a minute or two to think about this and see if you can get started. But we'll probably want to end up going through this together. But why don't you just take a minute to, to, to give this a little thought. All right. 